Did you know there's an official Gen 3 Pokemon game that's completely lost to time? It was called Pokemon Garden, and you're watching footage of it right now. It had some original music and even had voice acting. Pokemon Garden was only released in Japanese, but as of this video's publication, it can't even be played in Japan, or anywhere else for that matter. But there's a team of archivists who spent the last few years trying to recover it and make it playable in English. We'll talk more about that towards the end of the video, but for now, let's discuss the game itself. Well, actually there's four lost games we want to cover today, but we'll start with Pokemon Garden since it's our favorite. By the end of Gen 3, Game Freak and Nintendo were seeing a pattern. Each new generation sold significantly less than what came before. Older fans felt they'd grown up and didn't want to play Pokemon anymore, a phenomenon Game Freak called graduating. Meanwhile, the series was failing to pull in a younger audience who could take their place. So they partnered with Bascule to make Pokemon Garden, a game primarily targeted at Japanese elementary students. It also aimed to bring back older fans by kicking off Pokemon's first large-scale web campaign. The whole internet thing was relatively new back then, so this was Pokemon's big online blitz. So even though Pokemon Garden looks like a Game Boy Advance game, it was never put on a cartridge. Instead, it was only only playable on a computer through Yahoo Kids Japan. Pokemon Garden launched on July 7th, 2006, a few months before Diamond and Pearl released in Japan. It started like any other Pokemon game, asking what you want your name to be, but it also goes a step further by letting you choose your trainer class. Then you march up to this four-story Game Boy building where the rest of the game takes place. The first floor is the lobby, where you can schedule your appointments to ride the Pokemon time machine. There is at least a two hour wait time for the machine, so until then, you can read Pokemon news updates or play mini games on these arcade machines. They record high scores just like real arcade cabinets, so if you're good enough, you can make a permanent impact on the world. At the scheduled time, you'll get a call telling you to climb aboard the time machine. You'll get your pick of the Diamond Tour or Pearl Tour. Yo, Pokemon You'll be joined by 10 other people playing online just like you and taken to an interactive tour of Pokemon's history. Each tour lasts about 30 minutes. Depending on decisions you make as a team and how you react when the time machine malfunctions, events can play out a little differently. <laughs> So therefore, you're encouraged to ride it again and again. After you safely return to the present day, all the passengers take a commemorative photo together. Hi, then you can ride the escalators upstairs to the gallery. You can actually see the lobby below through the gallery floor. There's three doors, and behind each one is a gallery dedicated to a specific region. The Kanto Gallery, Johto, and one from Hoenn. Each room has music specific to that region, and comes with an upper balcony room. Inside you can see official artwork including concept art, maps, character art, and you can read about the Pokemon native to each region. You can also chat with other people in the gallery, who are actually other people playing online, not NPCs. Game Freak's office is on the third floor, and you can poke around and watch the developers working hard to make Gen 4, or chat with the devs like Jinichi Masuda and Ken Sugimori, who share trivia and show you silhouettes of Pokemon who haven't been released yet. Interestingly, some information they shared turned out to be not true, like that Sinnoh's starters would be fighting, dark, and psychic types. In their offices, you could check out the developers' Pokemon teams and watch videos of them. Like this one, of Sugimori drawing Gengar. There's also a Pokemon quiz if you want to test your trivia, and a couple of hidden rooms you can only access with secret passwords. If you sleuth your way into the secret diamond room, you could download this exclusive wallpaper for your computer background, and you could get this one in the Pearl Room. The fourth floor is a souvenir shop where you can buy stuff like emoticons and stickers. To earn in-game cash, you'll need to play the arcade machines in the lobby or enter tournaments on the top floor. Well, maybe top floor is not the best way to describe it. It's more like the inside of Pokeballs on the building's roof. 
they open up and each one is as big as a stadium inside. These tournaments are essentially rock, paper, scissors, but instead of rock, paper, scissors, you use Pokemon types. Water beats fire, fire beats grass, and so on. Winning against other players gets you in-game money, and if you beat enough opponents, you take on NPC Game Masters. There's a lot more to it, but we don't want to bore you with every detail, so that's the long and short of it. Looked at as a whole, Pokemon Garden amounts to an interactive Pokemon museum and theme park. It was initially scheduled to shut down five months after it opened, but it was extended another month due to popular demand. A lot of the footage in this video comes from a press release made for investors, which boasts of Garden's million plus visitors and even attributes to the success of Diamond or Pearl to this unprecedented online campaign. Diamond or Pearl broke this series' downward sales spiral and managed to outperform both Gen 3 and the Gen 1 remakes. How much of that can actually be attributed to Pokemon Garden is impossible to say, but this investor video sure seems to think it played a big part. Garden was so popular in fact that after it closed, it was reopened again. This time permanently, they said, but interest tapered off as time went on and so it was eventually closed forever. However, as we mentioned earlier, there's a group of preservationists trying to resurrect it once again and make it playable in English. It's some of the same folks who recently released fan localizations of Pokemon Mystery Dungeon Wii games that only released in Japan, which you could play right now if you wanted to, thanks to these guys. Unfortunately though, restoring Pokemon Garden's a bit trickier than localizing Pokemon Mystery Dungeon Wii. Garden was technically a Flash game, so the only way to restore it is to find fans who played it 15 years ago and ask for their browser cache. And we're not talking cash as in money, an internet cache is essentially a computer stored data of websites it accessed in the past. The preservationists use them like puzzle pieces to put the game back together, but it isn't easy finding people with computers that old that are still working. And one person's cache is only part of the picture. With their project leader, MVIT, translator Higsby, and a few researchers, they've made good progress, but 100% completion's gonna be impossible without community support. That's why we made this video! If you ever played Pokemon Garden, please visit this link. Or, if you know anyone else who played it, ask them to visit this link. It's called Flashpoint, and it'll check your browser cache for Flash games so you can donate them to all Flash restoration projects, including this one. Hopefully someday soon, Pokemon Garden can be restored for fans all around the world to experience firsthand. There are three more lost Pokemon games they hope to recover as well. After Garden's closure, the official website announced Pokemon Mazeland, a comparatively simple game where you run through Pokemon-shaped mazes. Any Pokemon from generations 1 through 4 were fair game, and every day, fans could explore four of them. In each maze, you're supposed to find four checkpoints, collect plates, and you can even chat with other players. There's still a lot of missing information about this one because not as many people played it compared to Garden, so there's fewer internet caches recovered. Another game was Pokemon Sky Tower, which launched side by side with Heart Gold and Soul Silver, and was seemingly inspired by the real life Sky Tree in Tokyo. Long story short, it's a Pokemon trivia competition that uses info from the first four generations of Pokemon, hosted by this guy in a Burmy costume. You compete against other players online, and for each correct answer, you ascend one floor of the Sky Tower. Get one wrong, and you go down a floor, and the first one to make it to the 100th floor wins. The game was only playable from 6am to midnight, and the tower had a pretty cool day-night cycle. There's a lot of missing data and information, but it's worth noting that Mazeland and Sky Tower both had online leaderboards. The last game is Pokemon Dream World, which unlike these other games, did originally release in English. It was also technically a Flash game, but it had the ability to connect directly to Pokemon Black, White, Black 2, and White 2. You could even send Pokemon from your DS into Dream World to collect exclusive items and catch new Pokemon, including some Pokemon that you couldn't catch in a Generation 5 game. Probably the best way to describe Dream World's like a simpler Pokemon version of Animal Crossing. Each player had their own customizable home where they could visit other players' homes as well. Unova doesn't have any soft soil for growing berries, but you get your own berry garden in Dream World, and you could send berries back to Unova. You can unlock new areas in the Island of Dreams like the windswept sky, sparkling sea, and spooky manor each with their own mini-games, Pokemon, and items to collect. 
Pokemon and items collected in the Dream World could be sent back to the DS games, and every Pokemon had hidden abilities. For a lot of them, it was actually the only way to obtain those abilities. Some were unlocked for free, while others cost dream points earned by playing minigames, making friends with other players, and watering berries for them. That's nice. The Dream World also appeared in the Pokemon Adventures manga, as an alternative dimension that Pokemon visit in their sleep. The game was shut down early in 2014, the same day as all of Gen 5's online functionalities, rendering it completely unplayable, just like the other games that we talked about. Again, if you ever played Garden, Mazeland, Sky Tower, or Dreamworld, please visit the link to share your flash cache. It can mean the difference between these games getting resurrected or languishing in the afterlife for all eternity. If they're ever brought back from the dead, we'll be sure to let you know in a future video. Did you know that there's a bizarre Russian Pokedex from the early 2000s that we fully translated into English? Click or tap the screen to find out. Special thanks to the preservationists who helped make today's video. I'm Austin John of the YouTube channel Austin John Plays. I do tips and tricks and tutorials for Pokemon and Zelda games. Thank you for listening to my voice talking about preserving Pokemon games that may be lost to time. And if you want to check out my channel, go for it. See you next time.